and welcome to the Maryland Education Network. Today we're going to talk a little bit about the Kerwin Commission. And the reason is because it would appear that 69, according to a new Goucher poll, 69% of Marylanders have never even heard of the Kerwin Commission. That's a little concerning because this is probably the most significant piece of legislation, particularly in, in terms of education, that has um, ever come about. So it's important that everybody knows exactly what it is that, um, that they're recommending and, and what this is all about. So I'm here to answer a couple of questions. We're going to talk to you about what is the Kerwin Commission, who was on this commission, and what are the recommendations. All right, so let's, let's go ahead and get into it. The first thing is, what is the Kerwin Commission? Before I go into that, I found a little something interesting as I started digging around a little bit today. I started, um, you know, Googling around a little bit. You'd think it'd be pretty simple. You know, you go to Google, you type in Kerwin Commission, report you pop right up. Not so much. What happens is, when you go to Google and you type in Kerwin Commission, Kerwin Commission comes up, and when you go to the results, you get these um, ads that are at the top. And the ads are from this um, place called the Education, it's the Baltimore County or the Baltimore Community Foundation. So the actual commission report is, is a little bit further down in the Google um, results, and I'm sure that that's not by accident. The Kerwin Commission Maryland Education Funding, and when you go to this, which is that Baltimore County Foundation, I'm sure they're wonderful people, um, the first thing it hits you with is education reform in Maryland. We are accountable not only for what we do, but what we fail to do. So this is obviously a pro-commission website, it talks about Maryland and students falling behind, um, action speaks louder than words, this whole um, we can't afford not to do it type of um, type of message and if, if you know if that's where you're coming from that's fine um, you know I'm not here to try and convince you one way or the other I just want to try and make sure that people understand exactly what's what's in this thing um, so when you start looking for the report itself I had a colleague at work the other day try and you know ask me um, to send it to send it to her and it, it, it takes a little while to find it you gotta really dig around to actually find the full report there's plenty of these little executive summary snippets out there but as far as the actual report it's it's a little hard to find so anyway let's 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 talk about so like I said you go to Google that's what you get you get these um, you know you, you go down a little bit and you get this Maryland Association of Board of Edu of Boards of Education MABE um, talks about their whole recommendation or their whole take on the Kerwin Commission which is they are very in favor of it as you can imagine um, then all the papers come up the Baltimore Sun etc etc um, and it's it's it never really you can't really actually find the report until about four or five results down you get to the Maryland state government type of websites msa.maryland.gov or msa.md.gov and MSA stands for the Maryland State Archives. So it's all been archived now, so now you got to dig a little bit deeper. Um, it is the Commission on Innovation in, in Innovation and Excellence in Education. And once you find it, you click on the link, then it takes you to some more of this, you know, state legislature stuff, which we all um, love, I'm sure. And then eventually you, you kind of find it. You find four reports there. There was the interim report from January of 2017, the preliminary report in January 2018, the interim report which is of 2019 in January, which is really the big one, and then the overview of January 2020. Most people, as you probably know, would jump right to the overview of 2020. Well, when you do that, it really leaves a lot out. <laughs> um, so it doesn't go to the, the full report. Um, so I'm going to kind of operate um, back and forth from both the summary and the full report so you have an idea of exactly what it is that we're talking about. As far as the um, full report goes, it is 300 and 300 and some odd pages, 200 and some, I'm not sure. It's pretty long. Um, yes, I read it. Um, <laughs> I have nothing else better to do. Um, but probably the most important thing where we can start off is, is I want to do a series of videos. This first one, I'm not going to go through the entire report, but I am going to tell you that there's going to be basically six 
videos that I'm going to do here. The first one is an overview where we're going to talk about the commission, what its what its goals are, what its charge was, and what their broad recommendations are. And then I'm going to do one for each policy area, because what they're trying to do in the in, in the news media and again in the um, just in the in the in the general public discourse, what they're trying to do is they're saying they're trying to say, well, it's just five simple little uh, recommendations, but they're anything far from simple. Okay. So, let's get into it here. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how this report came about, and it's it's not really that complicated. Okay, and 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 all this is readily available online, but I just kind of thought I'd summarize. So, if if, if you want to just watch one, you can just watch this um, this video right here, the one you're you're watching now. This will kind of sum everything up. I'm going to do a little more detailed, and the reason is is because I don't think people realize how in depth and how encompassing and how huge and large and drastic this is. This is a major, major shift in education, a major change in the direction everything's going, or not so much in the direction everything's going, it's just more, it's bigger, and uh, it's just, you know, whether you're for it or against it, but just make sure you know exactly what we're talking about. So let's talk about this commission to begin with. First of all, the 25-member commission was created in 2017 by the legislature and the governor, and they were given two things to do. Review and update current funding formulas. When you say funding formulas, means that they decide how much per pupil they're going to spend, and they take into all the different uh, facets of, of how to create this, uh, of how to create this, um, come up with this number, saying X amount of number per, uh, X amount of dollars per student. The second thing, and this is really the big one, develop, this is exactly what it says, develop policies and practices so that Maryland schools perform at the level of the world's best systems and students are prepared for a career in college in the 21st century. That's a pretty broad charge. Um, so that's what it is. Again, develop policies and practices so that Maryland schools perform at the level of the world's best systems and students are prepared for a career in college um, in the 21st century. So that is essentially the two charges. But the first thing that I notice when I, well, the first thing I noticed was how hard it is to actually find the report, which I just mentioned. But the other thing is kind of interesting, and that is in the, in the full, in the little overview here, they don't actually list who the commissioner or who the members of the commission are. You have to dig around to the full report to find it. Unless they hope I have found it. And it's, it's kind of interesting who, who the commissioners are or who the people who are on the commission, the people who are on the commission. And I'll go down them real quickly, one by one, just to make sure you know these are the people who created this um, commission. The chairman of the, of the, um, of the commission, Dr. William Ker Kerwin, K-I-R-W-A-N, Dr. William Kerwin, Chancellor, um, University of Maryland. I'm sure he's a, a very smart intelligent man um, and then there is David and, and I'm going to kind of give you a little bit of a, of a quick synopsis of what this commission is David Brinkley Secretary of Budget and Management who is actually a Republican um, then you have the Dr. Uh, Robert Carrett or Carrot I'm not sure how he's I, I would assume it's Carrett or Carrey Chancellor University of Maryland um, Dr. Uh, Dr. Scott Dorsey, chairman of Merit Companies, um, who was a Democrat. Bill Ferguson, Maryland Senate Democrat. Dr. Chester Finn, um, State Board of Education, but yet has some Democratic ties. Uh, worked for the Brookings Institute. Um, worked for um, various Democrats at, at, at different times. Um, David Healthman, Executive Director of Maryland State Department or Maryland State Education Association. In their own words, it is the largest union in the state of Maryland, and it is the teachers' union. Um, Mr. Coleman Hedelman, Independent Education Analyst and Advocate. I'm not exactly sure what that means. Then there are a handful of um, delegates and senators. Um, Adrian Jones, Democrat. Ann Kaiser, Democrat. Nancy King, Democrat. Um, there was a um, past president, Elizabeth Leet, or Light, uh, if I'm pronouncing any names wrong, I certainly apologize. Um, she is um, past president of the Maryland uh, PTA. Richard Madaleno, uh, Democrat. Maggie McIntosh, Democrat. 
Um, and, and the list just goes on. Paul, uh, Paul Pinsky, Democrat. Craig Rice, Democrat. Um, State Superintendent of Schools, um, Karen Salmon. Um, Joy Shaver, who was uh, on the Frederick County Board of Education. Now she's working for the for the Democratic uh, County Executive in Frederick County. Um, Morgan Showalter, who's a, 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 I believe is an art teacher in, in, in Baltimore City. Um, and the only teacher representative on this commission. One art teacher from Baltimore City. And just a few more. David Steiner, he's from Johns Hopkins. Um, uh, Allegheny. There is one, one or two lone Republicans. Um, William Valentine, Allegheny County Commissioner. Um, Alonzo Washington, Democrat. Steve Wall, Maryland Senate, was a Republican. Um, then there is there are a few community folks from these nonprofit um, ch- early child care type of um, facilities like Margaret Williams. Um, Donald Young, Maryland Senate, um, Democrat. Again, I, I'm not trying to say it's right or wrong. I'm just saying this this commission, overwhelmingly Democrats. There were 12 actual politicians, senators, House of Delegates, whatnot. Um, 11 of them Democrats, one Republican. Um, so that is who makes up the commission. <laughs> Uh, you you can you can think that's a good thing if you are, are a Democrat and you think that that's that's where it needs to be, or you could think that that's that's stacking the deck a little out of sorts. However, if you look at the makeup of Maryland, you could say, well, Maryland is overwhelmingly Democrat, therefore it's representative of the state. And you know, again, I'm not here to try and convince you one way or the other. I just want you to know where this is coming from. Um, so now we know what the commission is on. Now we know who is on the commission. Now the next question is, what are the are the recommendations? And the recommendations are, they, 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 they kind of sum, summarize them into this quick five um, little bullet points to make you think, oh, well, that doesn't sound too bad. Um, the first thing they do in their report is they list this um, long list of um, data about how Maryland is in the middle of the pack, Maryland has um, been very mediocre, and it's time for improvement, and we need to do this, we need to do that, and we, we can't stand around and do nothing. Um, so, and, and I don't necessarily disagree with that. Um, you can't disagree with the facts, because the facts are Maryland schools have not done very well for quite some time. So we get into the policy recommendations. Essentially, there are five policy areas, Okay. And the first one is about early childhood. Recommendation says um, expand early childhood publicly funded full day pre K for four years and for three or for four year olds and for three year olds who are below a, a certain policy or a certain um, income threshold. So for poorer, uh, more needy um, children. Policy area two high quality teachers. Increase rigor and standards for teacher preparations, improve teacher compensation to be comparable to other professions, and to improve working conditions in schools to give classroom teachers time in the school day, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. She's talking about more money for teachers, more teachers, and according to them, increasing the rigorous standards of the teachers uh, in, in order to be a teacher. College and career readiness is number three. Um, Implement rigorous and aligned pre-K through 12 curriculum that illuminates in as many students as possible. Um, post-college and career pathways. Um, talks about funding for um, um, hands-on type of vocational training, that sort of thing. So that's all wrapped up in number three. And then in number, in number four is providing significantly more um, support for students um, who are in schools who need it. Um, talking about um, concentration of poverty school grant, additional support for English learners, special education students. And then lastly is the area five or is the um, accountability um, report. So th- therein lies the five, um, five um, bullet points that they want to make you think that that's what they're doing. So when you go back to this um, this website, this edu- this uh, BaltimoreCommunityFoundation.org, they list, they say, you know, what are the current commission's recommendation? Five bullet points. Expand pre- pre-K for full day 
to all four-year-olds as well as three-year-olds for low income, increase the standards to become a teacher and raise teacher salaries, um, revamp high schools to offer students um, to offer student training for well-paying jobs right after graduation, provide more support for special education students and for students in schools with low, higher concentrations of poverty, and um, a new um, over um, oversight board for um, um, to to effectively implement and to be accountable um, for for implementing all the, the changes. Sounds pretty simple. Five things: additional pre-K. Higher standards for teachers, um, college and career training for students, more support to schools who don't need it, or who, who do need it rather, and accountability. Five things. Pretty simple. But you'll see in some of the other videos when we go through them one by one, the enormity at which they propose to achieve these five things. All right, well, that's all for today. And I hope everyone's enjoyed it. And I hope to see you more. If you got some comments, please, please chime in, send me some comments. Um, been in education for 30 years, and I've got a lot, uh, a lot of stories to tell, and you'll be hearing a lot more from me, uh, hopefully in the in the near future. Um, I was a teacher for 14 years. I was a, a school-based administrator for 16 years, and um, I know inside, I know education very well from the inside. I know the good, the bad, the ugly, and um, you're going to be hearing from me soon. Anyway, have a great day. It's glad you could join me, and um, have a great day.